things started hitting the fan because of, of several mistakes I made, and it was stressful. Like, I would say maybe around November time, there was a point where I reached where I honestly wanted to be done. Like, I wanted to quit. Man, and break that down. Why? The, the stress was just so much for me. Like, there was, like, money wasn't coming in the way it used to earlier in the year. And mm-hmm. see, I remember you warned me, it's going good now, but when it doesn't, it's going to be bad. And it really was. Money wasn't coming in the way it was supposed to. We were spending way more than we needed to. Mistakes were made. And then it was just all downhill. And I was just so overwhelmed with everything that was going on that I really was like, man, I think I'm done with this. Talk about the mistakes. Break it down. So, what, what was the biggest mistake, you think, uh, during that time period? I think the biggest mistake was definitely not letting people go when we needed to let them go mm-hmm. and not fast enough. We weren't pivoting or I wasn't pivoting fast enough like we were paying like four grand for two people on the team that were vas <laughs> and we were definitely overpaying for the services and what they were doing did not equate to four grand a month and it just at the end of the day didn't make sense anymore we we're just burning through the money rather than even making any money yeah and there wasn't even enough jobs at that point to fulfill over four thousand dollars <laughs> Anyways, I always tell people that when you're running a business and you're now managing people, when I hire somebody and they cost four thousand dollars a month, I'm not looking for them to just do four thousand dollars a month of work. Because if you do that, why'd you hire them in the first place? That's more of an ego play like, oh, my God, I got a big team. Yeah, but your team ain't making no damn money at the bare minimum, in my opinion. They need to make double what they're worth. Yeah. So if they cost four thousand, they need to bring in eight grand. So that, mm-hmm. that way you make four grand. That's the only time you should be really scaling big. Now, I did want you to scale, and I will admit to some flaws here. I, I wanted to scale the company bigger because Did you, you I don't know if you mentioned did you mention that you guys are co founders in this company? I don't know if you did on this podcast. Uh yeah, so I'm a co founder of Focus Media. Jonathan's actually my uh little cousin here that with a lot of talent and I saw a lot of talent in them. And so that's why we started focus media. He was actually my intern before you PJ. Yeah. And he went back to college after college. I was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to get a job? You're going to, what do you, yeah. what's the plan here? And that's when we decided to open up focus media mm-hmm. and it started off really strong, very yeah. powerful, uh, profitable from month one. He was able to make a good salary and I was able to make my money back. Mm. very quickly yeah. in, in the business. So kudos to Jonathan on that. However, some of the key mistakes that he brought up was that he did not let go people fast enough. Mm-hmm. Number one, they lack skills. They didn't have the skills that we needed, mm-hmm. but you're learning to hire better now. Mm-hmm. I was willing, f- I was, you know, willing to let him make that mistake because mm-hmm. that's the only way you learn. For sure. I did that at pop-up cafe. I hired a lot of wrong people. Um, you didn't hire enough people. Uh, you name it. When it came to hiring, I did it all wrong. Yeah. But you learn. And sometimes it's one thing for me to tell him, but it's another thing for him to experience it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to dive into it, you know, yeah. deeper, especially back to what you say before I kind of cut you off. Apologize for that. But you were mentioning the issues that he had with, with hiring and how people, if you hire them for 4,000, you expect them to make 8,000, right? So I want to get your take, Brian and Jonathan. How do you hire better? How does one hire better to get those expectations? Let's see, Jonathan, let's let Jonathan answer that first. What do you, what did you learn to hire better? Definitely. I would say like, you know, there's all those personality tests out there and sometimes Mm -hmm. people might think it's like some BS, but I think those personality tests, personality tests are kind of important especially if you don't know the person at all it kind of gives you a sense of who they are as a person Mm -hmm. and that might help with you gauging kind of how they are as a person yeah then the next thing is like whether they have the skills or at least even bare minimum willingness to learn and put in the time to actually like get better at what they do so are you referring to like a a skill test like Prior to hiring, is that what you're mentioning? Yes, like definitely a skill test I think is very important, especially in this line of work. Because, yeah, you can honestly learn everything online, Mm -hmm. but if they don't have that willingness to even learn or even care to learn, Mm -hmm. then it really doesn't even matter Yeah. at the end of the day. I I always bring this up 
to get better at hiring, you you kind of hit a point where you, if you you know you know, but at some point you got to just hire them and put mm. them on a probation period yeah. because every task is different. Yeah. All you can do is really try to vet them as best you can for the job that you need. Mm-hmm. But at some point, you got to just w- see it in action. Yeah. And let, yes, let's say we hire somebody and it costs $70,000, $100,000 a year. That's why I won't just wait a year before I let them go. Yeah. Within a week, you will know this person's like true nature. Mm-hmm. Are they really working? Did they really BS their resume? Yeah. Because resumes don't really tell you much about the person. Yeah. They put a bunch of BS reference on there when you call them. Of course, they're, they're you know, they're friends that are picking up the phone. Yeah. They're, it looks all great, but the proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. If you say that you're good at cold calling, get on the call right now. Yeah. If you can do that in a res- like in, in during the interview, yeah. great. Or when in his case, it was editors, show me your work. Yeah. Unfortunately for them, the work that we were getting back. Because mm-hmm. personally, it was terrible. Mm-hmm. That's why I knew to fire them right away. Yeah. Because it was taking up too much of his time, like micromanaging the worker. Mm-hmm. And then on top of it, it's just like the, the the color grading was all jacked up. I'm not even an editor. Yeah. But I looked at it and I said, this guy's not doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, for you sure. You got to fire him. For sure. But I don't know what you were thinking and you just kept him on. That ended up costing like, yeah, that's why we burned like four grand or maybe even a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, hard lessons. You, you definitely remember that stuff as, as you're going through. Um, you know, it's a failure on its own, but hey, we learn from them. That's the way, what the podcast is all about. Yep, um, right. But what I want to ask is, <clears throat> what I want to ask is, I know you're, you know, we're talking about hiring um, and you were saying resumes are, could be BS potentially. Yeah. Right. I, I just want to challenge and ask, can't, Disc tests and personality tests like that. I'm I'm truly curious. Like, can't those be BS as well? It's yeah. Just, so we went to this uh, conference, uh-huh. and they actually said that your resume, the interview process, and the disc test mm-hmm. are like at under ten percent mm-hmm. whether or not you'll get a good candidate or not. Yeah. Like, meaning you you'll have a ten percent success rate mm-hmm. because all those things can be lie. Yeah. What you need to start doing is a predictive index yeah. test, which basically uh, tests them on their behaviors and their and uh, seeing how they respond during certain situation. Mm-hmm. I haven't personally used them yet, uh, but they're saying that that's probably a I think a upwards of seventy something percent effective rate. Mm, I see. So, uh, I, but those programs cost money, and so if you're hiring a lot, I do agree you should probably pay for that program. Yeah, but for me. I don't hire that many people at, at that high level skill. Mm-hmm. So I my thing is just put them to the test. I'll yeah. give you a week. Yeah, I think a week is, is fair for anybody to prove if they, they, they got it or not. You know, if you can't tell within a week, you're probably just being a nice guy. Yeah. And next thing I want to transition to, since I said that, is what is some advice do you have for people who are hesitant to fire and – are trying to play the side of, you know, I want to be the nice guy. Like, I want to give them a chance. What is what is some advice that you got? Let, let's start off with Jonathan first. Oh, yeah. Um, see, I was that nice guy. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I was just so afraid of, like, firing them. And I think it really just stemmed from me just not mm-hmm. wanting to be the quote-unquote bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> really the main thing I learned is that, honestly, at the end of the day, it's really about the business and keeping the business alive. And if you can't make those hard decisions, then you, you just got to make those hard decisions. You just got to be kind of, in a sense, ruthless and just do it, let it go, you know? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much like 